another beautiful hot sunny day here and Paisley and I are just out in the backyard keeping cool. It is hot. Right Pais? Paisley's body clues are showing me that she's hot. I can see that her mouth is open and her tongue is hanging out and she's panting. <laughs> That's how dogs show us they're hot. Right Pais? Mwah. That's right. All right, let's get started with some shaking today. Come over here and lie down. Good girl. All right, let's do macaroni and cheese. I feel like we haven't done that for a while. So you shake, shake, shake. I like macaroni. I like cheese. I I'm still practicing with this new bowl. I don't think Paisley really likes the drums so much. That's why she left. But that spot in front of that door under the porch is Paisley's favorite place to lay on a hot day. There is no grass in that spot because Jeff just finished building that door this week. And I think the cool ground with the breeze coming through underneath the big maple tree makes it a comfortable place for Paisley to cool down on a hot summer day. <whistles> Listen, she heard the whistle. All right, babes, I'm gonna read without you. I have two stories today. They are both about kids who live in big cities. The first one, is by the amazing Mo Willems, who writes the Piggy and Gerald books and Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus books, and even Naked Mole Rat Gets Dressed that I read a few weeks ago. This one is called Nuffle Bunny. Pay close attention to the illustrations in Nuffle Bunny, my friends. They are glorious. Mo Willem uses a really interesting technique to make these drawings, these illustrations. Mo Willems uses photographs, so he takes a picture with his camera and then he makes drawings later on that he puts on top of the pictures. What a great idea! Nuffle Bunny. Not so long ago, before she could even speak words, Trixie went on an errand with her daddy. Do you see? An errand is a chore that you might have to run. Going to the grocery store to get milk, running an errand, picking up some paint from the hardware store is running an errand. And the errand that Trixie and her dad are running on this day is they are going to the laundromat. Do you see here? The daddy is holding a laundry basket full of clothes and there's the mom at their house. Now some people have a washer and dryer machine at their house to do laundry, but many people do not. When I lived in the apartment with Chris and Jackson when they were small, we didn't have a washer and dryer, so we had to go down to the basement of our apartment building and pay money. We put money in the laundry machines to wash and dry our clothes. Trixie and her daddy went down the block through the park past the school and into 
the laundromat. That's the word for the store that sells washes and dries for clothes. Laundromat. Trixie helped her daddy put the laundry into the machine. Looks like Trixie's being a little goofy. I like that. I like a good time. She even got to put the money into the machine. Then they left. But a block or so later, Trixie realized something. Bum, bum, bum. Look at those body clues. Trixie doesn't look comfortable. Trixie turned to her daddy and said, Aggle, flaggle, clababble. Right, Trixie's so small, she's just learning how to talk. She doesn't have words yet, so she's making noises. Aggle, flaggle, clababble. That's right, replied her daddy. We're going home. Said Trixie again. Blaggle plabble. Wumpy flappy. Snurp. Oh, it's so hard without having words to tell her daddy what the problem is. Now, please don't get fussy, said her daddy. Well, she had no choice. Trixie bald. <laughs> she went boneless. She did everything she could to show how unhappy she was. By the time they got home, her daddy was unhappy too. He does not look happy. As soon as Trixie's mummy opened the door, she said, where's Nuffle Bunny? The whole family ran down the block and they ran through the park They zoomed past the school and into the laundromat. Trixie's daddy looked for Nuffle Bunny and looked and looked. But Nuffle Bunny was nowhere to be found. So Trixie's dad decided to look harder until Nuffle Bunny! And those were the first words that Trixie ever said. Oh, she loves that stuffy, right? That's a great way to calm down when you're feeling upset, to hug your stuffy. Imagine how worried Trixie must have felt when she didn't have her stuffy to hold. I'm glad she got it back. Another great one, Mo Willems, thanks. Whistle for Willie by Ezra Jack Keats is another book about a kid who lives in a big city, just like Trixie. Oh, how Peter wished he could whistle. Do you know what a whistle is? It sounds like this. Sometimes when I whistle, Paisley comes running. Did you hear a little whistle, love? Yes, yes, you did. All right, are you gonna stay for the story with us? 
He saw a boy playing with his dog. Whenever the boy whistled, the dog ran straight to him. Kind of like Pace. Peter tried and tried to whistle, but he couldn't. So instead, he began to turn himself around and around and around he whirled faster and faster. When he stopped, everything turned down and up and up and down and around and around. That's called getting dizzy, right? When you spin yourself around, it makes you feel dizzy. Peter saw his dog Willie coming. Quick as a wink, he hid in an empty box laying on the sidewalk. Wouldn't it be funny if I whistled, Peter thought. Willie would stop and look all around to see who it was. Peter tried again to whistle, but still he couldn't. So Willie just walked on. Peter got out of the box and started home. On the way, he took some colored chalk out of his pocket and drew a long, long line. Right up to his door. He stood there and tried to whistle again. He blew till his cheeks were tired, but nothing happened. He went into his house and put on his father's old hat to make himself feel more grown up. He looked into the mirror to practice whistling. Still no whistle. When his mother saw what he was doing, Peter pretended that he was his father. He said, I've come home early today, dear. Is Peter here? His mother answered, why no, he's outside with Willie. Well, I'll go out and look for them, said Peter. First, he walked along a crack in the sidewalk. Then he tried to run away from his shadow. He jumped off his shadow, but when he landed, they were together again. He came to the corner where the box was, and who should he see but Willie? Peter scrambled under the carton. He blew and blew and blew. Suddenly, out came a real whistle. Willie stopped and looked around to see who it was. It's me, Peter shouted and stood up. Willie raced straight for him. Peter ran home to show his father and mother what he could do. They loved Peter's whistling. So did Willie. Peter's mother asked him and Willie to go on an errand to the grocery store. Another errand. Hmm. He whistled all the way there. And he whistled all the way home. You know, Willie practicing whistling reminds me of the singing bowl I'm learning to use. Right? I have been practicing with this singing bowl every day and still it is not making a great ringing noise. But it took me months of practicing with the little singing bowl to figure out how to make it sing beautifully. So if I keep practicing, I might just figure this out. Can you imagine if Willie tried whistling and he couldn't do it and he never tried again? He still wouldn't be whistling. It's important, even if you can't do it the first time, to keep on trying. But it's also important to take a break if you're feeling frustrated. All right, I hope you get some outside time today too to enjoy this beautiful day, and I'll see you next time.
Bye-bye. <laughs>